All right. So what we have here is we have again three intermediates and again the job is same. So we are doing it over and over again so that we can become master of this concept and we understand organic to the bottom of our heart. Now we have three uh, groups, three substrates given again and again what we have to do is we have to judge the stability of these three substrates and that will also give us the order of rate of reaction. Again, the situation is the same. You'll have to remove off the living group as they depart and the draw the corresponding intermediate that will be formed. And to reason out and to get the order of stability of those corresponding intermediates. So if Cl minus goes off from here, you'll have a plus charge left behind on the carbon. Same would be here. And if a all happens here, then the plus charge will come on this carbon. Let's see. Now let's look for stability. Let's reason out and let's try to get to the order of their stability. Now the situation would be the same. It will all, all be the same. Uh, like all you have to do in organic chemistry is you have to decide upon the stability of different intermediates. Now the theory, the weapons and the tools to decide them, we have studied them already. Uh, not much of the theory is going to come again. The theory part has been covered. Now we'll be practicing and applying them in different situations. That's how organic goes about. Initially, you have to give a little bit of investment, and once you are equipped with those kind, those those informations, those theories, then situation becomes very easy. It will be a breeze for you. Now, we are not studying anything new, as you can see. We are just applying we have what we have already studied. Now, resonance, resonance. Is there any resonance here? No resonance here. No resonance here. Uh, I can see some pi bond and you may be tempted or you may think actually there will be a resonance but unfortunately there will be no resonance. Now we had a discussion on this why there will be no resonance but considering this to be important I'll explain you again why there will be no resonance here. Now this plus charge and this pi bond may appear to be in conjugation actually that will be preposterous to say that they are in conjugation but it may appear to some of us. Now let's analyze the situation how it is. If I draw the structure, drawing the orbitals, we have a situation like this. This is the benzene ring having three pi bonds inside. Those three pi bonds are like this. And there's a plus charge on the carbon. The carbon is also making a pi bond. Let's consider this carbon. This carbon is making a pi bond and this also have a plus charge. Now this, among the very f initial lectures, we have seen this and we understand this very well. The plus charge signifies this empty orbital. When you remove off the electron, then the nucleus has an excess of proton that gives us the plus charge. And actually you have removed that electron from the orbital. So that makes orbital empty. So plus charge effectively means you have an empty orbital like this. If you look at the hybridization of this carbon, hybridization would be actually it would be sp hybridized because for hybridization you only consider sigma bonds. We don't consider pi bond. We don't consider plus charge. We consider sigma bond, lone pair, and negative charge. So this carbon will be sp hybridized. Now, if you know or you must be knowing. In uh, sp hybridization, the bond angle is 180 degree, right? If it has to exist in a six-member ring, then the bond angle should not be too far away from 120 degree. So considering it to be 120 degree, there will be a strain of 60 degree in this bond. Too high of a strain. Plus, uh, the hybridization is sp, that means sp the percentage s character is 50 percent very high percentage s character that makes this carbon very high electronegative we have a plus charge on a sp hybridized carbon 
प्लस चार्ज ऑन एस पी टू हाइब्रोडाइज कार्बन इज वेरी अनस्टेबल प्लस चार्ज ऑन एस पी हाइब्रोडाइज कार्बन इज ओनली गोइंग टू मेक इट वर्स सो द सिचुएशन इन लाइक लाइक दिस दिस इज द ऑरियंटेशन ऑफ द मॉलिक्यूल दिस इज अ वेरी हाई एंगल स्ट्रेन इन द रिंग ऑफ सिक्सटी डिग्री एट वर्स एंड दर इज अ प्लस चार्ज ऑन अ very electronegative atom carbon carbon is less less electronegative when we say carbon is less electronegative we say that in sp3 hybridization state as we increase the percentage s character electronegativity increases this we know this we have it this we have already discussed so the percentage s character is 50% that makes carbon considerably electronegative and na plus charge on that electronegative atom is not stable now is there any resonance no sir there is no resonance here because the orbital this empty orbital is in a perpendicular plane to the rest of the orbitals and this discussion we had long time before for any electronic exchange the orbitals has to be parallel when they are parallel electronic exchange are possible when they are tilted like this electronic exchange is mitigated it is less pronounced when it becomes perpendicular like this electronic exchange is zero we don't consider that very little electronic exchange practically for practical consideration there will be no electronic exchange right because the distance between the tips increases as the angle increases when it is parallel the distance between the tips which carries most of the electronic density because they are bulged they are more bulged in the on in the front so the bulging part are closer when they are parallel if we increase the angle between them the bulging part become far away at 90 degree it becomes it is at the furthest farthest possible distance so when it is at 90 degree then the electronic exchange is not there that's why here there will be no resonance at all so there is no resonance there is a high angle strain there is a plus charge on a more electronegative atom so all adds up to a situation where it is at nadir so this intermediate is not stable enough to be formed forget about considering it for the rate of reaction right so and and so there's also a question like they can ask you will there be a sn reaction via sn1 mechanism in chlorobenzene or they'll ask you there is no reaction in chloromic benzene via sn1 mechanism explain so you'll explain it like this there's a high angle strain there's a plus charge on a more electronegative atom and there's no other stabilizing effect acting on this plus charge not even hyperconjugation nothing that's why this plus charge is not having any stabilizing effect rather there are two highly destabilizing effects operating on this intermediate that makes the situation worse enough that it is not at all formed right so that gives us the answer now for deciding these two it's simple we'll start with resonance we'll see there's no resonance then we come down to hyperconjugation is there hyperconjugation yes there is hyperconjugation from both the sides and there are six alpha hydrogen three on each sides here is there any hyperconjugation yes there is hyperconjugation and there are two alpha hydrogen on both the sides making it ha that makes the count of alpha hydrogen as four so 6 4 0 highly unstable so the order would be a greater than b greater than greater than c actually practically c will not have any rate of uh, not have any uh, reaction at all via sn1 if you remember when we talked about sn2 then also we discussed that chlorobenzene in chlorobenzene the reaction is not reaction does not take place via sn2 and here we have discussed that the reaction does not take place via sn1 either so chlorobenzene will not have a reaction either by sn2 or by sn1 it has it does show some of the reactions for nucleophile and that is through snar mechanism that is not this is not the time to discuss it that will be discussed at some time later but somehow if they ask you that this chlorobenzene do not show reaction for sn1 does not show reaction for sn2 please explain then you would explain how i explained you now for sn1 and you would explain how i explained you before for sn2 all right not to add to it but we have just discussed we can also uh just consider this together with chlorobenzene 
we have a vinyl chloride now this is uh, this is this is the common name of this structure this this substrate is vinyl chloride this yes 2 ch group this is called vinyl group right you yeah, this is used to make a polymer pvc you must have heard of it polyvinyl chloride so vinyl chloride is the monomer to make that polymer polyvinyl chloride so this is vinyl chloride you will meet it again in the chapter polymer so this is vinyl chloride this is chlorobenzene and they ask you they both do not show either sn1 or sn2 now intuitively you can guess why vinyl chloride shouldn't show sn1 or sn2 extending the idea for what we have discussed for chlorobenzene let's discuss for sn2 chlorobenzene do not show sn2 because the antibonding is inside the ring right so the nucleophile cannot get into the ring and apart from that above and below the plane of the ring you have electron cloud density so nucleophile cannot get inside that well of electron cloud and then start putting its electron into the antibonding that is not possible doesn't show sn2 this doesn't show sn2 here don't you don't, we don't have a well of electro electron density but what we do have here is a situation like this antibonding is very close to a pi bond high electron cloud so if nucleophile comes around it definitely there will be a repulsion apart from that this there is a resonance between among between chlorine and the spy bond because of the lone pair on chlorine and the spy bond so actually this single bond that appears there is not a single bond if we draw the hybrid of this there will be a double bond character so when there is a double bond that makes it hard for chlorine to leave the substrate and move out so cumulatively both the effects do not allow sn2 to operate now sn2 will not operate in both of them sn1 does not operate on chlorobenzene because of reasons we have seen at great length a moment before for the same reason sn1 will also not operate in vinyl chloride because if at all sn1 operates in vinyl chloride then what will happen is you'll have a you'll have a plus charge again on a sp hybridized carbon this carbon is making one sigma bond with carbon the other sigma bond with hydrogen the hybridization of this carbon is sp percentage s character is, zero, is higher 50 percent and i have told you before i'm telling you again the carbon which is sp hybridized that is more electronegative than nitrogen which is sp3 hybridized so if we don't allow plus charge to appear on nitrogen this is as situation as that plus charge on carbon is also sp hybridized carbon is also as worse as having plus charge on sp3 hybridized nitrogen but apart from that we don't have any other stabilizing effect for this plus charge we don't have any hyperconjugation we don't have any inductive effect we don't have any resonance so this plus charge is bad enough to be formed rather this plus charge is not formed so vinyl carbocation is not formed under normal circumstances sn2 is not possible either so both vinyl chloride and chlorobenzene will not show either sn1 or sn2 now this is an important questions conceptually to build on this and to go to the full fledged reactions you need to understand these tits bits they are not new theories we are just compiling what we have already studied before